Get faster internet speeds for free when you get TV, internet, and phone. Ask for Trio from Rev. Rev. Join the revolution. Coming up in news tonight, Fort Charlotte MP Dr. Andre Rollins says the FNM convention contributions by the two leadership candidates sends an unfortunate message that an entry fee is in place to run for leader. Plus, a former PLP cabinet minister calls for former opposition leader Hubert Ingram to fix the FNM. That story coming up. Temperatures continue to soar and there's no end in sight. That story straight ahead. Welcome to our news. I'm Dana Smith. Thanks for joining us. Toppy news tonight. Following confirmation that Free National Movement leader Dr. Hubert Menace and Long Island MP Loretta Butler Turner will be paying $100,000 each to help fund the party's $350,000 convention. Fort Charlotte MP Dr. Andre Rollins says the news is sending an unfortunate message that some type of entry fee is in place to run for party leader. Rollins said that's not the case and that must be clarified. There clearly is the impression created that uh, there is an entry fee for those who wish to offer themselves for leader of the party. And that is not the type of democracy I think we ought to uh, be cultivating. Rollins said the ability to contribute hefty amounts of money is made a condition for participating at the top level of politics that would definitely exclude a lot of people who have a lot to offer. I think the importance of this time is to not appear to be limiting participation in the leadership of the party to those who are either A, financially affluent or B, those who have a lot of affluent friends. Rollins said the FNM is not imposing a fee on anyone wishing to challenge the leadership spot and it needs to be clearly articulated that rather than an obligation, the $100,000 payment is simply an agreement made by those preparing for the convention to compensate for the fact that the party is in need of funds. Rollins said Butler, Turner and Minnis were asked to contribute and agreed to do so. There will be no obligation on the part of any late entrance mm -hmm. to pay that sum and um, hence I think that is why it would be in the best interest of people like Dr. Minnis and Mrs. Butler-Turner to raise these funds rather than paying out of their own pockets um, because the reality is that um, that responsibility or that obligation will not necessarily be borne by anyone else nominating at the last minute. Ultimately, Rollins added, rather than candidates being asked to help foot the bill, the party's chairman ought to be entirely responsible for raising the funds. Mr. Colley, as the chairman of the Free National Movement, should be going around the country seeking contributions. Rollins said it's unfortunate that an impression has been created that persons who want to lead the FNM are expected to pay $100,000 as that's not a position he would support. Politics should not be a rich man's game. Former Progressive Liberal Party Cabinet Minister George Smith asserted that the division within the free national movement is a clear result of the lack of unity and suggested today that only one person can fix the issues in the party. And that's the party's former leader, Hubert Ingram. Simone Davis has the story. I believe his name will be Hubert, but it won't be Menace. That was former PLP Cabinet Minister George Smith's response when asked his thoughts on who is most fit to lead the opposition and resolve the issues within the fractured party. Smith said he has watched the drama unfold within the FNM, which ultimately led Long Island MP Loretta Butler-Turner and former Senator Dr. Dwayne Sands to form their own leadership team to challenge current leader Dr. Hubert Minnis and Deputy Leader Peter Turnquest. Smith asserted that the only way the party's issues can be resolved is if Ingram returns as party leader. And FNMs ask themselves the question, the first thing they have to recognize, who can unite that organization? as fractured as it is, who can bring a cohesiveness, who can cause a campaign to be focused? Well, history has proven that Ingram 
has been the only leader in the history of the FNM to be able to do that. Smith says although the fraction within the FNM could be an advantage for the PLP in the next general election, it is still affecting the government's ability to govern effectively. It does have an effect because the system calls for an aggressive opposition to keep the government on the toes, to make the government accountable. You won an election promising to do various things. You haven't done those things. You won an election promising to, to keep, to put Bahamians first. You won an election promising to, to bring national health insurance. You won an election committed to these things. You're not making those, pointing out the, mis, the, 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 the lack of performance of the government positions the opposition to benefit from it in the next election. Well, this opposition hasn't done that. Smith also declared that despite the issues within the PLP, he can guarantee that it would never become like the FNM. The PLP is a party unlike the FNM, very much unlike the FNM. But we will not ever let the party become, the PLP become fractured over the question of leadership. Reporting for our news, I'm Simone Davis. Amid growing frustration over frequent power outages, opposition leader Dr. Hubert Menes called on Bahamas Power and Light Company to disconnect the power supply of Bahamar, which is lit up each night despite owing the cash-strapped company millions of dollars. Menes said in a statement, at a time when lack of capacity on New Providence is to blame for forcing Bahamians to suffer through constant power outages, common sense would dictate that BPL would cut off a vacant construction site site that is tens of millions of dollars behind on its bills and redirect that power to businesses and customers who are paying their bills. It is unclear how much Bahamar currently owes BPL. Court documents last year placed the figure at $26 million. In other news, the nation is experiencing one of its warmest summers ever over the past month and a half, with a scorching summer set to get even hotter as the month of August approaches. Jasmine Brown has an update. Beaches like this one in western New Providence have become a place of refuge for those trying to beat the heat as records have been broken for 13 weeks in a row. An unprecedented streak of warmth that has caused temperatures to soar. And the Bahamas has not escaped the above average heat, says Senior Deputy Director of the Met Department, Jeffrey Simmons. This is a trend that has actually been going on since May, as a matter of fact. The average daily temperature for May in the past 30 years is 85.8 degrees Fahrenheit. This year, the average May temperature was 87.7 degrees. This year's June daily average reached 90.5 degrees, two degrees above the historical average of 88.5 degrees. As for July, Simmons says temperatures have soared to an average of 95 degrees, compared to the 30-year average of 90.3 degrees. While not everyone is enjoying the sizzling summer heat, there are some who are enjoying the balmy tropical weather. It, it's hot. It's, it's real hot, but you know, it's, it's cool. It's not as bad as I thought it was. It beats uh, scraping ice so, uh, off your windshield, so take the heat when you have it. It could be worse. And if you think there is good news on the horizon, well, Simmons says think again, as August is typically the hottest month of the year. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. When our news comes back. Members of the Disabilities Commission are speaking out for equal rights. That and more tonight on our news. So stay tuned.